Welcome back to Thrash Reviews, where yours truly, Thrash Maniac 99, continues to review upcoming hard rock and heavy metal albums in the calendar year of 2016. And tonight, for my second review of the day, I am reviewing a big one that I missed early on. This came out in late January, and I've heard great things about it, but I wanted to explore for myself the newest release from... Aventasia, their rock opera, metal opera, what you want to call it, called Ghost Lights is the name of the album. Uh, Aventasia is a uh, power metal slash symphonic metal slash progressive metal rock opera supergroup that was formed in Germany, and they have had numerous uh, members of classic bands such as, you know, Judas Priest, Queensryche, Halloween, Deep Purple, Alice Cooper, Kiss, Scorpions, as well as some uh, other ones like Sabotage, Symphony X, Saxon, as well as some classics, or not classics, some modern bands like um, uh, T Nightwish, um, Camelot, Epica, Within Temptation. The resume of Associated Acts along with Aventasia is absolutely crazy. It's really quite broad, if I can say that for myself. But with this album, this is a um, continuance of what this band has been doing from what I've heard over the past several albums that this group has actually done. And it's all about concept records with stories to tell and the mastermind behind this group uh, Tobias Samet who is the lead vocalist who also plays uh, bass and keyboards he's the mastermind behind all this and he wrote like the lyrics and the songs and boy I gotta tell you from the lyrics this guy has, was writing for this album this guy really knows how to put on a great show when it comes to uh, the albums and the stories it tells. Uh, the albums tell. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the review. The opening track, Mystery of a Blood Red Rose. Under a four minute track, and this kind of sounded to me like a heavy metal version of Meatloaf. Uh, Meatloaf, the great rock singer, one of the greatest singers of all time. It's like Tobias' voice on this track sounded like he was going for his best meatloaf impression and he, he did it quite well and the song itself was very beautifully executed epic but then it goes into the longest track of the album and my favorite track of the album let the storm descend upon you and whew, three guest vocalists on this song and just holy cow the the journey that this song takes you on, no words can describe it. I'll just leave it at that. You just gotta listen to it to believe it. Uh, the next track I want to talk about is The Haunting. And uh, the get one of the guest vocalists for this song was D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. And he his voice really soared on this track and just... For a song like this, all about some maybe some dark mythological uh, beings within a person's dream or something like that is what I got from this song. It really tells another great story, and the song construction of itself was well done and consistent. The next track I want to touch base on is Seduction of Decay. This was the one song of the album that Jeff Tate, formerly of Queensryche, now in Operation Mindcrime, participated on. Say what you will about how Jeff Tate can be an idiotic asshole, but there's no denying that he's a phenomenal singer, and he really soared on this song. Although he sounds a little older, then again, he is older, so that explains it. But his voice has aged well, and he really soared on this track. And this is actually another personal favorite of mine, because this song was very beautiful, heavy as well, and what more can be said. Uh, the next track I want to touch base on is the title track, Ghost Lights. And this is one of 
three tracks that features a uh, former, the classic vocalist from Halloween, uh, Michael uh, Kiske, if, uh, Kiske, or however you pronounce his last name. But people know him as the, the uh, classic lead vocalist of Halloween on like the Keeper of the Seven Keys albums that are classic for this particular subgenre of power metal. And he still sounds amazing to this day. Because I, I remembered listening to some Halloween a while back and hearing this guy's voice and just... <clears throat> absolutely incredible. The song construction of it... Out, out of the song of itself, gosh, I cannot speak. But um, again, continuing consistent, uh, consistent flow of just wonderful songs, with the the way the music was constructed, the lyrics telling a great story, as uh, as I've been saying throughout this whole time. But the last track I want to touch on is Isle of Evermore. The reason why is because the guest vocalist on this song. Sharon did Sharon Den Adel from Within Temptation. And this was actually like the softest song of the album, or at least one of them, along with the song Lucifer, which was a very uh, ballady driven track, kind of similar to Heaven's Cove by Dream Theater off The Astonishing, which actually came out the same day as this. But with Isle of Evermore, just that uh, harmony and the duet with... Tobias Samet and Sharon Den Adel was very beautiful, and this was a beautiful song. Not a, essentially not a metal song. It's just more of a ballady, epic, symphonic track. But it was still absolutely beautiful, and no complaints. So overall, with this album, this is the second metal slash rock opera of the year, along with Dream Theater's The Astonishing. Now, does now it brings a question. Was this better than The Astonishing? I'm going to go on a limb and say yes it was, because with The Astonishing, it's a, it's a fantastic album. I highly recommend it, but you kind of got to take your time with it, because it is a long album. This is easier to get through, and also I think the, uh, the flow of the album is a lot more consistent than what was with The Astonishing, personally. So, overall, it happened again. 95 out of 100. This, along with The Astonishing and Winter Thrice, contenders, top three right now for Album of the Year. But, wow. No words can describe how beautiful, how masterful, how consistent this album was. It takes you on an epic journey like no other album I've reviewed this year. Maybe aside from The Astonishing and Winter Thrice, but you get what I mean. It's a very, um, it's an absolute fantastic album, one I highly recommend, and one that I'll probably pick up very soon, because it's that damn good. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.